Hi, I'm Katrin. Welcome to my channel. My passion is storytelling and that is what you find on my channel. I do the overall story of Margit Sandemos book serie The Legend of the Ice People. It's a fantastic family saga which extends over several centuries. That is what I'm going to look into in my video today. Every book in this story stands on its own. You can come into the story anytime. So far we have followed Sul's journey from the Lindali to Copenhagen in Denmark. Many things happen during her stay there. She found a missing child, practiced some witchcraft, stops working. She was also accused of being a witch. She had to escape and she traveled with the king's men to Skåne. She got kidnapped and rescued by Jakob Skille, which she later found herself in bed with. In Skåne she visited the hills of Brösarp, the place Hanna had told her about. She found the place she was looking for, but the witches were gone. It was about 60 years since they changed places for their meetings. Sol got the direction from the old couple and is now out looking for the place. She is also looking for the herb Black Nightshade that she need for her trip to Blåkulla. On the way to Tollarp she heard voices in the forest. She found a group of soldiers catching a woman. When Sol heard her cry, she came to her rescue. Meta, the young woman, explains the way to Anska Skorge. Before Sol continued the journey on her own, she made sure that Meta was thoroughly cleaned. She was now free from both lies and fleas. Meta warned her about the abyss and who lives down there. But Sol was not worried at all. She is more eager and expectant. Sol found both Anska Scorch and three people who turned out to be exactly like herself. They welcomed her. Of the other witches she learned three important things. She was not alone in Norway with her knowledge. The forest Finns have made their way through Sweden and into Norway. They had great knowledge in witchcraft. She was also told that she had to hurry home, someone needs her help. And the third is why they are called the Ice People. It was not because of the valley of the Ice People, no, it's because they have ice in their hearts. They cannot love. When we left Sue the last time, she and the three others have gone into trance and after inhaling a secret potion. While the others have a wonderful journey through time, Sol had a nightmare. The potion make it possible to meet descendants. She saw her mother and father. She also saw Silje from the night when she saved her. It was good memories, but Tengel the evil appears too. Then she begins to feel panic. She shouted to her father, Tengel, that she needed help. And at home in Norway, he wakes up. He feels like Sol needs help. Both he and Silje try to help her. And back home in Norway, Liv had married Loris Berenius. Liv realized almost immediately that this marriage will not be a happy one. Every day it gets worse and worse. Everything have calmed down. Sol felt it. The man and the sick witch put her back on the ground. They were still worried after witnessing her fight against something unknown and deadly scary. The old witch was immersed in her world of dream visions and the others returned to their own dreams too. The evil one have disappeared into the darkness again. The visions continued. Sol was now so exhausted that she could barely see what it was. Everything was so blurred. She felt like she was about to wake up. 
one thing she still noticed was the creatures, her ancestors before the time of Tangled Evil. They had a strange appearance. She had also seen people walking across snowy fields. Something told her that her ancestors have traveled far, in for infinity long time ago, and they settled in Norway. She remembered the old witch word about the forest fiends from the east. The ancestors of Tangle the Evil could have been the remains of an unknown, now extinct people from the east, with special supernatural gifts. Extinct except for Sol and her family. Liv, Are, and herself was the three of them who could pass on the evil legacy. She had promised Hanna that she would do her best, but it was not urgent. First she would live. The ice people, could there be a third explanation for the name? That they were a people who came wandering over ice and snow for an unknown number of centuries ago. Well, nothing was impossible. Suddenly, she discovered that she was awake. She was alone in the woods, by the dying fire. The other three could hardly be called a good company. They were still in their own visions. Sol promised herself that she would never take part in this form of experiment again. The others had a peaceful expression on their faces. She was sure that they have kind, harmless ancestors. Now she have seen her own ancestors and that was enough. To meet the evil spirit of the ice people one more time would be the height of self-torture. She did not want to expose herself to that. She sat up and threw some more firewood on the fire. What had saved her? What was it that had driven away the disgusting sight? She tried to think back, but she has a hard time remembering. Someone had shaken her and talked to her. It had not helped at all. No, it was something else. Could it have been Tangle? She had a call for him. Had it really been him? Yes, surely it was so. What she remembered was love. She had been embraced by a selfless love. The love had protected her from the evil. Tingle and Celia. Celia, no, that was not possible. Celia had no such ability. But the impression of her foster parents, the boundless love for her, took a grip on her. She felt filled with love. The four of them sat all morning talking. The darkness gave way. The dawn moistened the grass with dew and the birds began to sing. Sol's plans were to stay with the three for a few days, but after the sick witch told her that she was needed in Norway, she understood that it was impossible. She was also worried about what awaited her at home. She must not forget Meta. She was waiting for her. She needs to find a good place for her where she could work and feel safe. It would be best if she ended up at full tofta. Then it's time to meet up with Jakob Skille again. She was looking forward to it. But first she must get her trip to Blåkulla. She has all the herbs now. They are to be made into an ointment which then sends her the long way across the valley and the mountains. She doesn't want to wait any longer. She has been waiting for this trip for many years. If she would first arrange everything for Meta and then meet Jakob and, and then travel all the way back to Norway before she made the trip. No, that does not work. She must be alone when she goes to Blåkulla. She must do it now before she returns to Meta. And there were no hurry. Meta could wait a while longer. Sol had told her that she will be away for a couple of days, and she intended to keep that promise. But she had a bad conscience for leaving the young woman so alone in the wilderness. But Meta had been alone ever since her mother died, so she was probably used to it. 
She said a warm goodbye to her new friends and returned to the hidden place where the horse was waiting for her. It was an incredibly desolate place up on Linderödsåsen. She had a great view from there. You saw several miles in several directions. Far away she could see houses, otherwise everything was just wasteland. Her friends have returned to the south, where the old woman lived. They would be there for a few days. She could see them as three tiny little dots, infinitely far away in a treeless valley. They had asked her to come with them, but Sol explained to them that she wanted to try the black nightshade. They understood that she wanted to be alone. Can you handle it after what you went through last night? The man wondered. I guess it cannot get any worse than that, said Sol. No, the sick witch laughed. On the contrary, if you have not been there before, then you have something good to look forward to. But rest first, said the old witch. You must keep in mind that the journey to Blåkulla takes quite a long time. How long? Well, the journey are different for each individual. Some are gone for a long time, others are not. Sol followed the three small dots with her eyes until they disappeared. She felt a little sad. This was the last time she saw them. All three were marked by death. They had welcomed her to their meeting next year. None of the three would live then. They probably all knew it. She was now alone with a horse. She had slept for a few hours. Her frightening experience she had the night before began to fade away. It felt more like she just had a nightmare. All Sol felt now was excitement. She had been waiting for this ever since Hanna talked about her trip to Blåkulla, the orgies and the pleasures. She began to prepare the ointment with trembling hands. In a small box she had sheep's fat. She had had it for a long time that it had dried and almost turned rancid. She warmed it up and managed to get it soft. She added the three magical herbs, henbane, hemlock and black nightshade. When the ointment was fine enough she lay down naked under a tree. The tree had large branches that hid her. The ground was hot and dry, but she had put a blanket there to make it more comfortable. She put the ointment under her arms and on the other places where the skin was thin. She put a little on the rod too, the one with the robber's hair on. Then she placed the rod between her legs and pressed it against the lower body. This was her ride to Blåkulla. She grabbed the rod with both hands. Then she relaxed. While she waited, she thought of the black nightshade. She had met people who knew what it looked like and where she could pick it up. She planned to bring a large amount home. If she liked the trip to Blåkulla, then she would do it again several times. She starts to feel tired. She did not notice that she slipped into a slumber. Everything is so beautiful. The colors are so intense. They exploded in light and spread all over the world. She took off. It rocked up and down. She floated in the air as if there were waves. She looked down over Skåne's beautiful hills. And down there she can see the house of Glimminge. She went down a bit and flew over the stairs of the castle. She looked for Jakob, but she did not see a single person. The only sight of life were the stork pairs that nested there. How wonderful it was to fly. She rose and fell at a breathtaking speed. She flew over a hilly landscape that was both green and rich in flowers. It was like Österlen where she had previously travelled. These were the she should started, but there was no sea. <laughs> That's weird.
Suddenly the rod changed direction. She starts to go down. It was so unexpected that she almost fell off. She grabbed the rod. She was not alone any longer. Other figures came hissing through the air. She recognized the old witch from Anska Scorch. They waved happily to each other. But look there. It's the priest's wife from home. From Greystone home. Sol knew that priestess was always accused by witches who have flown to Blåkulla that they were seen there. But this was strange. This priestess at home, she was so pious and victorious, almost like a saint. Had she seen wrong? Now she comes again. It is her. What was she doing here? She rode on a bark, and it showed his long and pointed... Uh, well, the one you don't talk about, according to Celia. Sol grinned, proper Celia. When she gets home, she must tell her that she saw the priest's wife here. Sol could see that she was approaching a dark blue mountain. She was greeted by flying figures. When she got closer, she saw that there were little devils. One of them sat down behind her on the rod and lifted her skirts. She enjoyed it, so this is how it should feel. This was something other than Jacob's human embrace. Now they seem to be here. There were so many people there, both women and men. She knew several, but most were unknown to her. They were all so many devils and they all looked so different. The priestess had come down to the ground. She leaned forward and pulled up her skirt. The demon behind Sol jumped off. It turned out that she would not stay here at all. A pity, she thought. They seemed to be having fun. The rod with the fluttering grey hair now steered itself. She gasped when she saw that they were flying right into the abyss. She flew so fast, she could not break, and she did not want to do it either. The air blew around her. She came further and further down. When she came down, she saw that there were more people here. They danced. Sol got off and walked over to them and started dancing too. Suddenly, everyone stopped. The evil one himself rose from the middle. He looked around. When his gaze reached Sul, he stopped. He pointed at her. Now everyone else was gone. They were alone now. Satan looked at her and smiled. And since his appearance was formed in each person's own imagination, he was the handsomest man Sul had seen. He also had yellow eyes, just like her. I think that we stopped here for today. So she finally got a trip to Blåkulla. After this the story will contain inappropriate text that is difficult to read out. I will skip some text but continue and read as best as I can. But that is for the next town. Now it's time to look into the episode of Fear the Walking Dead Mother. In the last episode, we get to know a new character, John Dory Sr., and he knows a lot about this leader, Teddy, from the end is the beginning, people. Then I will continue with Margit Sandemus' book series, The Legend of the Ice People, the book's stepdaughter, The Abyss. I will then pick up exactly where we left Sol, at Blåkulla. Some of my videos are published for a long time, others are removed quite quickly. If you don't want to miss anything or if you just want to support my channel, subscribe and click on the notification bell. I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you so much for stopping by. Stay safe out there and welcome back.